I started researching, there's two parts of the book, it's interviews and then there's appendices full of every living and dead anarchist fiction writer I could summon up. Um, and I researched probably about a thousand authors for that, um, maybe a little bit more, I'm not really sure, uh, to find out who identified with anarchism came with like 90 of them. And, and one of the things that really surprised me is the number of mainstream literary types, uh, mostly dead, who identified explicitly with anarchism throughout their lives and were constantly misunderstood. Um, my favorite example of this is Henry Miller. Henry Miller wrote Tropic of Capricorn, Tropic of Cancer, um, and a bunch of other books. I can't actually get through them, I'm not into the abstract fiction thing. But, um, you know, all my friends were obsessed with him when I was in high school. We didn't know his politics. Uh, there's a book length interview with Henry Miller uh, in which the interviewer asks Henry Miller, and asks, asks him, so you call yourself an anarchist, but you're so organized. And Henry Miller's like, yeah, totally. And the guy's like, no, 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 don't, don't you get it, it's a joke. You call yourself an anarchist, but you're so, so organized. And, like, and Henry Miller's like, yeah, totally, uh, that's, that's a true statement. And, um, and the, the interviewer doesn't get it. The interviewer uh, didn't bother to research the politics of this person they're writing a book length interview about. And this really bothers me. Um, because if they knew he was an anarchist, why didn't they at least look it up? And I know there wasn't Wikipedia then, but there's like been books about this for 150 years. They could have figured it out. Um, so the interviewer gets frustrated and says, well, why do you call yourself an anarchist? And, uh, and Henry Miller is like, well, because I like read Kropotkin and shit. Like, this isn't that hard. Um, and, uh, and this is what really struck me, too, is because when I first started trying to research literary anarchists, you type literary anarchists into Google and you get these, like, web pages of, like, these are, like, the bomb throwers of the literary world, you know, because that's, like, what anarchism is, is, like, people throwing bombs, which is certainly a minority of anarchism. Um, and, uh, you know, so these are the equivalent of literary bomb throwers because they write so crazy and different than everyone else, like Henry Miller does. And, uh, but no, actually, um, some of these people are politically identified as anarchists, and that actually is a rich tradition that they consider themselves part of. Um, Anthony Burgess uh, wrote Clockwork Orange, uh, later apologized about it, especially the misogyny as uh, represented in the film. Um, and uh, at one point he's being interviewed and they say, uh, you know, um, so, you know, what are your politics or whatever, and he says, well, I never had any money, so I guess I'm an anarchist. Um, and I really like that. Um, Aldous Huxley I mentioned, uh, Oscar Wilde I mentioned, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, Kurt Vonnegut is uh, author of Slaughterhouse-Five, all these amazing books. He's my favorite of these people I'm talking about right now anyway. Um, he was giving a talk uh, at some point and someone interrupted him from the audience, like a press person or someone asked him this question. They said, you know, uh, Mr. Vonnegut, why are you ruining the youth of America? Or whatever, you know. And, and, and Kurt Vonnegut's like, what? What's, huh? And he just gets flustered and he walks off the stage. Um, he doesn't know how to respond to these, like, you know, someone yelling at him about, like, ruining everything. Um, and so the next day, he talks to the media, he talks to someone from the press about this, and he says, look, I don't understand what's so hard to figure out about my ideas. I'm a world citizen, I'm a pacifist, and I'm an anarchist. Um, and then uh, there's Tolstoy, who's probably the only non-English speaking as first language of these people. Tolstoy wrote War and Peace, a whole bunch of other stuff. One considered, like, one of the most important authors, uh, certainly of Russian history, but also just, you know, of literature. Um, and, uh, and his quote is, uh, the anarchists are right in everything except that you can use violence to bring about an anarchist society. Um, and that's something that a lot of anarchists today, including a lot of people I interviewed, but not everyone I interviewed, actually agrees with, is like pacifism is uh, totally a part uh, of anarchism, um, of some people's anarchism. Um, and these were just the mainstream people. Sorry, I'm spitting on this camera. Um, these are just the mainstream people. There are people all over the place, all these zine writers, all of these things. And then also mainstream writers from all over the world and all over the world's history who are coming up as anarchists. Um, like Kafka was involved in uh, anarchist groups and stuff growing up. Um, and uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple things. I'm going to talk about what we can accomplish politically uh, by being <coughs> fiction writers. Um, and I'm going to talk about what are some of the anarchist solutions to being a fiction writer. Um, and eventually I'm going to get to a really important PowerPoint presentation and you'll all be very awed by all of the, the bullet points that will come up. Um, this is very important. Uh, okay, so what do we accomplish politically? Um, one thing we accomplish is that we're normalizing radicalism. And this is, this is perhaps the, the main point in my mind. Um, we are uh, saying, look, it's totally normal to be a radical. The comparison that you can make, uh, that I like to make, is that you have so everyone, every, everyone, everyone knows homophobic literature is like kind of shitty, you know, because it's like literature that's like, we hate gay people, right? That's obviously bad. But what about heteronormative literature? 
most everything we read, and most especially every movie we watch, you know, has like, you know, this heterosexual relationship is like crux of it. And it's just this idea that like, to be normal is to be straight. That's heteronormativity, Hetero heteronormativity, whatever. And that's more dangerous. Um, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, I guess fewer people run out and beat people to death or whatever um, because of it. But it, it really gets under people's skins. People grow up thinking, oh, I have to be straight. That's like what's normal. And, and, um, and that's a problem. Um, and the same is true with other forms of radicalism. Um, and I want to see radico-normative literature. I want to see anarcho-normative literature. I want to see, uh, you know, feminist norm normative literature. I want to see stuff that says, like, look, you don't have to be some crazy outlandish, like, you know, like take a movie Fight Club where, like, the whole point is that, like, actually he's just crazy to ruin it for anyone. Um, you know, and so it's like, it's okay to be radical if you're crazy, you know, and it's okay to be like, wow, that crazy thing. But, but it's much more interesting to see people who are living their lives, um, and are perhaps even sort of normal, uh, I guess I'm not the spokesperson of that, but um, who, who are anarchists or who um, are queer or who are trans. Like, I'd like to read a book where a trans character doesn't die. If anyone has any suggestions for books where trans characters don't die, I'd love to know about them. Um, and we, we can try and change that. Then there's the idea of the anti-hero, and this is the idea that um, as anarchists we're not competing in the marketplace of ideology. Uh, we are not saying everyone should be an anarchist. Uh, what we're saying is you need to question ideology. and probably you need to stop putting government on me without my permission because there's a whole consent thing that's kind of important but um, and so a lot of anarchist writers write with anti-heroes they write with flawed protagonists they write uh, characters where they're not giving the reader a moral compass at all like you have to come to your own conclusions is this right is this wrong um, and this is where even like anarchist pacifists will write anarchist terrorist characters partly because it's like you need to see into these people's heads you need to understand all of these different things um, and, uh, and fiction is really good at questions instead of answers. Um, fiction makes, is terrible for dry utopias. It's terrible for Aristotle and the, they're going to anarchist utopia. Okay, that's not a good way to get a story across. And that's not what fiction is good at. Fiction is good at saying, okay, so let's say you have an anarchist society. Now what's good about that? And what's bad about that? And what are the, what are the complexities that we're going to have to deal with um, living in that society? How does it affect you emotionally? If everyone's running around polyamorous, how does that like you know screw with the people who like want to be monogamous, right? Um, those are both addressed by two different books by different people I interviewed. Anyway, um, and um, and I think that that's really important. I think that that's uh, one of the points that um, yeah, sure we can all write nonfiction and that's great. But there's also something to be said about taking theory. It's sort of almost like dummy practice. It's like taking theory, putting it into practice is what anarchists and activists talk about all the time. You know, praxis, they call it, because um, they need more big words. Uh, it was a short word, but no one knows what the fuck it means. Um, and, um, and fiction is like kind of a way of dummying that up, because you can work out these mind games. Um, and then finally, uh, I interviewed this author um, named Michael Moorcock. Uh, it's kind of an unfortunate name. but. Um, and he, uh, he's written like a hundred novels. And um, anyone knows anyone with a chaos star tattooed? It's an eight-pointed star. A lot of travel kids have this tattooed. Um, a lot of shitty people have it tattooed too, but it, whatever. The chaos star is actually developed by Michael Moorcock. Um, and he's incredibly influential on modern literature. Anyone who's ever played like Dungeons and Dragons or anything that's knocked off of Dungeons and Dragons, which is like every fantasy thing, um, as much as they rip off Tolkien, they rip off Michael Moorcock, and very few people realize that when you drink the potion of speed and go twice as fast, it's all because of these terrible pulp novels that are really awesome by Michael Moorcock. And one of the things he's done um, is he often puts anarchist, historical anarchists into his novels. Like there's a whole Warlord of the Ares series where you have this like Ukrainian anarchist Makhno running around on airships, like shooting at Stalin and like you know all this shit. I, I, I eat this shit up. Um, and. Uh, and I asked him about it. I was like, so what's the point of like putting these anarchist characters? Like, what have you accomplished politically? And everyone else I asked this is like, well, you know, we can accomplish these things and, you know, consciousness raising. And, and Michael Moorcock's like, you know, a lot of my readers have become anarchists. 